What's up guys, Joe here. Today I'm going to teach you how to operate a abacus, which is one of So right here I have an abacus which has 10 beads on each wire rod, so it's a 100 rod. Oh. Okay, so right here I have a school abacus which has 10 beads on each wire rod, so this is a 100 bead abacus. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swamp Pin which has two beads in the upper base and five beads in the lower base. And a Japanese one called the Sorbun which has one bead in the upper base and five beads in... Uh. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pen, which has five. Uh. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pen, which has two beads in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck. And Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pen, which has two beads in the upper base. Deck. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's one. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a the Chinese one called the Swan Pin, which has two beads in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck, and a Japanese one called the Sorbun, which has t one bead in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck, and a uh, what? Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the... Uh, now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pin, which has two beads in the upper deck. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a the Chinese one called the Swan Pin, which has two beads in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck. And a Japanese one that has one bead in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck. And a uh, Russian one, Shadi. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a the Chinese one called the Shot Pin. So, no. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pin, which has two beads in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck. And there's a Japanese one called the Sorbin. Swan Pin, Sorbin. Now there's multiple types of abacuses. There's a Chinese one called the Swan Pin, which has two beads in the upper deck and five beads in the lower deck. And a Japanese one called the Sorbun, which has... I understand your nervousness. So why don't we real quickly So now, like I said, we're going to do five digits. So why don't we try 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to be using five place values. So we're going to be doing a two in the ten thousands place, a three in the thousands place, a nine in the hundreds place, a one in the tens place, and a four in the ones place. So that's 23,914. And then, like I said, we're going to do plus 76,334. So right here, we're going to move seven beads to make nine. And then right here, we're going to move six beads to make nine. 
And then right here, we're going to move 12 beads. So, So now let's try the five digit math problem. So we're going to try to do 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to be using five place values. So you want to do 23,000, so two in the ten thousandths place, three in the thousandths place, nine in the hundredths place, one in the tenths place, and four in the ones place. So that's 23,914. And then like I said, we're going to do plus 76,334. So then we want to move seven beads right here to there. Seven, 76, and then we're going to move six right here, which also makes nine in the thousands place too. And then we're going to move 12 place, 12 in the hundreds. Dang. Ugh. So now, like I said, we're going to do a five-digit equation. So we're going to do 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to be using five place values. So we're going to move the two in the ten thousandths place, three in the thousandths place, nine in the hundredths place, one in the tenths place, and four in the ones place. So that's 23,914 and then plus 76,334. So we're gonna move seven beads right here to make nine total in the 10 thousandths place. And then we're gonna move six beads right here to make nine total in the thousandths place as well. And then we're gonna move 12 right here, but wait, we do not have enough beads to move 12. So we're gonna move one over to make 10 and then we're going to move this over because we're adding the more digits right there. Okay, so now let's try a five digit problem. So we're going to try 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to be using five place values. So we're going to move a two right here to make two total in the thousandths place, or ten thousandths place. Then we're going to move the three right here to make three total in the thousandths place. Then we're going to move nine right here to make nine total in the ten thousandths place. Then we're going to move one right here to make one total in the tenths place. And then four right here to make four total in the ones place. And then we're going to be adding 76,334. So we're going to move 7 right here to make 9 total here. And then we're going to move 6 here to make 9 total there as well. And then we're going to move 12 right here, but wait. Dang. Okay, so let's try a five digit problem. So we're going to add 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to have five place values. So we're going to have two in the ten thousandths place total, three in the thousandths place total, nine in the hundredths place, one in the tenths place, 
and then four in the ones place. So that's 23,914. And remember, we're adding 76,334 to that. So we're going to move seven beads over here to make nine total here. Then we're going to move six beads to make nine total there. Then we're going to move 12 beads right here. But wait, we don't have enough beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to move one more in the thousands place. Then we can move all these back. We're going to move one right here. So now we're going to have two more to move right there to make 12 total that we moved. And then you'll notice that there's 10 in the thousands place as well. So we need to move this so that we can move that back. And then you'll notice there's 10 in the 10 thousands place too. So we're going to move one in the 100 thousands place and move that back. And we should be good now. We have two right there. And then we're going to add three right here to make four total in the tens place. And then we're going to move four right here to make nine total in the ones place. So you should have a total what? What in the world did we do wrong? I have no clue what we just did wrong. Oh yeah, I was so used to that side. Be right back. I'm gonna stop you. So now we're gonna try doing a five digit problem. So we're gonna try to add 23,914 plus 76,334. So we're gonna, that means we're gonna use. So now we're gonna try a five digit problem. So we're gonna try adding 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're gonna use five place values. So we're gonna have, move two right here over there. And then three right here for... Okay, so now we're going to try five-digit problem. So we're going to try adding 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to have five place values. So let's try moving two in the ten thousands place, three in the thousands place, nine in the hundreds place, one in the tens place, and four in the ones place. And so like I said, we're gonna be adding, dang it. So now we're gonna try to solve a five digit problem. So we're gonna try adding 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're gonna have five place values. So we're gonna move two in the ten thousands place, three in the thousands place, nine in the hundreds place, one in the tens place, and four in the ones place. So that makes 23,914, and we're gonna add 76,334 to that. So we're gonna add seven more beads to that to make nine total. Then we're gonna add six more beads to that to make nine total as well. And then we're gonna add 12 digits to this. But wait, we don't have enough beads to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the one bead right here and then we're gonna add one right here so that we can add one digit to here then move back to zero. And then remember we have two more digits to add left to this. And you'll notice that we have 10 inside of this one too. So we're gonna have to borrow, not borrow, but we're gonna have to move this one, add a digit to there so that we can go back to the beginning for this as well. And then we're gonna add a digit to this and then go back to the beginning. 100,200. Come on. So we're gonna to try to do a five digit problem. So we're gonna add 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're gonna have five place values. So we're gonna move two beads in the 10 thousands place three in the thousands, nine in the hundreds, two, one in the tenths, and four in the ones. So that means we got 23,914 beads 
plus we're going to be adding 76,334 to that. So we're going to add 7 beads in the 10 thousandths place, 6 beads in the thousandths place, and then 12 beads in the hundreds place, but wait, we don't have enough beads to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move one bead to make 10, and keep note that we have two more left that we need to move on this. So we're going to borrow this, so I, move, I was able to move this back, and then we're going to add our last two beads to make that. And then you'll notice that there's 10 in the thousands place as well. So then we're going to move this, so that we can move this back in the thousands place. And you'll notice that there's 10 in the 10 thousands place as well. So we're going to move one in the 100 thousands place so that we can move this back to the zero. So then we got all this taken care of. And then we're going to be adding three to this, I think. To 23,900, one, one, four. So yeah, 76,334. And the last digit is 4, so we're going to be adding 4 more to this. So hopefully this wasn't too complicated. You should have gotten 100,248 if you did that correctly. i got to do that one more time. Alright. So now we're going to try to add a five-digit number. So we're going to try adding... Nope. So now we're going to try to solve a five-digit problem. So we're going to try adding 23,914 plus 76,334. So that means we're going to have five place values. So we're going to move two in the ten thousands place, three in the thousands place, nine... Really? I did it wrong. This is six places, not five. So now, is it possible to do a decimal place? Yes, it is. If you want to do a decimal place, just make sure you keep track of where that is. You can either like mark it somewhere, or else you could just have one of the one of the wires is zero, and you could just note that that's the decimal place. So let's try a sample problem with a decimal place. So let's try 23.86 plus 51.04. So let's try, I think it would be 20, we move two in, uh. Okay, so now is it possible to do decimal places? Yes, it is. If you're going to do a decimal place, just keep track of where you have that. So you could like maybe put a mark on the side or something, or else you could just leave a wire blank where you use zero beads and just take note that that's the decimal place. So let's try a sample problem real quickly. So I'm going to try 23.86 plus 51.04. So I'm going to be using five place values. You could do whatever. I'm going to have this... Now, is it possible to have a decimal place? Yes, it is. So if you have a decimal place, just keep note of where you have it by maybe marking the side or else just having zero beads on a certain wire and keeping track that that's the decimal place. So let's try a sample problem real quickly. So I'm going to do 23.86 plus 51.04. So that means I'm going to be using five place values. I'm going to have the hundredth place as the decimal point. So I'm going to move 2 in the tenths place, 3 in the hundreds place, and then I'm just going to leave this blank. And then I'm going to have 8 in the tenths place, and 6 in the thousandths place. And then we're going to be adding 51.04 to that. So we're going to be adding, it's just like normal, we're going to be adding 5 in the tenths place for me, and then 1 in the once place and then this is going to be blank once again and then we're going to be adding zero we're going to be adding zero in the tenths place and then we're going to be adding four in the in the thousands place so that means i can add one more digit to this and move this all back to zero so if you did that correctly you should get 74.90 or just 74.9 
go over another problem real quickly. Okay, so now let's try another one. Let's try 12 times 12. So basically we want to have 12 right here. We'll have this be the tenths place and this be the ones place. And then up here, it doesn't matter exactly how you do it. I'm going to actually have this be the tenths place and then this be the ones place. So let's try 12 times 12. So like I said, this is the ones place. So we're going to take one away from right there. And then we're doing... 6 times, and then we're doing 12 times 12, so we have to move 12 here, so we're going to be, oops, I forgot to, no, I didn't forget to clear that out, we're going to be moving this, I know, that would be amazing, yeah, like, you could give me the cues, that would be really cool. So that's how you do multiplication. Now division is, once again, is pretty much the opposite of multiplication. So we're going to have the number we're dividing on the... Okay, so now let's try another one that's slightly harder. So now let's try 108 divided by 9. So we could do it the uh, ones, tens, or hundreds place in either order. Like you can have this be the ones place right here. Oh wait. So now let's try another one that's slightly hard harder. Okay. So now let's try another one that's slightly harder. So now let's try dividing 108 divided by 9. So we can have the hundreds place e and ones place either right there. Or right here, it depends on personal preference, or of course on the bottom, it could be right here or right there as well, if you're doing the bottom. So, if I'm going to be doing the top ones again, I'm going to actually have the hundreds place right here, tens right here, ones right there. It could be the other way, but it, it doesn't matter actually. And I think the same for multiplication, but anyway, so we're going to do 100, 8, 1, then leave this at 0, and then we're going to move 8 right there. So that's 108, and then we're going to divide that by 9, so we're going to be moving 9 groups at a time. So we have 8 right there, so we can move 8 back, and then move one of these right here, and then we have 2 left over. So the, now we have... Uh oh Okay, so now let's try another one that's slightly harder. Let's try to do 108 divided by 9. So now we're going to have the 3... Uh. Okay, so now let's try another one that's slightly harder. Let's try doing 108 divided by 9. So we're going to have 100 places. So you could either have the 1's place right there or right there. Same with the 100's place. Or if you choose to do it on the other side, you can have it right there or right there for either of them. So let's do, let's put in 108. I'm going to do my hundreds place right here, tens, ones right there, just because. So one, and then leave that at zero. And then this will be eight. So 108 divided by nine. So we're going to move nine at a time. Right here we have eight, so we can move eight over there, move one right here. And move one right there as well, because we have one left over. We moved eight, and we need to move nine. So now let's move one right here. Oh, I'm doing multiplication instead of division. You are right. Yeah. Okay, so now let's try another one that's a little bit harder. Let's try doing 108 divided by 9. So you can have the hundreds place right here, tens right here, ones right here, or else you can just have it this way too. Or if you choose to do it on the bottom, you can do it either way right there as well. So let's put 108 in right there by putting 1 in the hundreds place, 0 in the tenths place, and 8 in the ones place. So like I said, we're going to be moving 9 at a time. 
So let's move eight right here. And in order to move at least one, we have to get rid of this. And then we're gonna move this, all this right here. We're gonna leave that right there. And then we're gonna have one left, oh, we're gonna have a bunch left over for nine, I think. So now we have 99, I think. Move one right there. Let's start over one more time. Okay, so now let's let... Okay, so now let's try another problem that's slightly harder. So now let's try 108 divided by 9. So we can have the 100th place right here or right there. I'm going to do mine right there. Or if we choose to do it on the bottom, then you could do it either way right there as well. I'll just figure it out. So... So I'm going to do 1 for the 100, so leave this for 0, and then 8, and then we're going to divide that by 9, of course, so we're going to move 8 back, and then we're going to move 1 right here, so that we can borrow right here, and of course we're going to leave this 1 right there for 9, and we should be able to move our ninth one. Or we just have to move one more so that gets moved over there. So now we have 99 here. So now we're going to move one thing right there because we did it once. And then we're going to move another. We're going to do this again. So we have to move 9. And then we'll just move another one right there. Oh, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to practice. So that's how you divide on an abacus. Now I'm not going to demonstrate how to do it with the remainder, but if there are some left over, like less than what you're dividing by, then turn the remainder into a fraction. So take the number of times you were able to divide it by, or, and then after that, oh. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And yes, and yeah, see you later. Have a good day. Have a good one. Peace. Have a good one. Peace. See you later. See you later. Have a good one. Peace.